I think this generation is is longing for something real, and there's nothing more real than the living God. Yeah. When when the presence of the living God is in the room, their hearts start to burn. They don't know what's happening to their yeah. hearts, but but there's enough there's enough within them the pursuit for the authentic, the pursuit for something genuine and real. It provokes them to ask questions and well, what is this? This is Jesus. You mean the one that I grew up hearing about? Yeah. This is him. Genesis 26, 18 tells us Isaac dug again the wells of Abraham. In every generation, there have been revivals, massive moves of the spirit that changed the course of history. In every revival, there were believers like you who chose to answer the call to become the one in their generation. Discover your call to be the one in your generation. We're about to take you face to face with history. I am Gene Bailey and welcome to Revival Radio TV. If you've ever been part of a church, you know there can be an expected schedule of events you see that repeats again and again and again. What happens if you're the pastor and you're being directed by the Lord to do something fresh that isn't a typical church? What if you're not even the pastor and God tells you to do that? What if what you're looking at doing seems radical, unheard of, scary? Today my guest encountered just that and he had to figure out how God wanted things to happen not just what he thought. So come along with me and let's explore what Michael Miller has to say and how he shares with us how the upper room all got started. You know, there's, as we go through history of revivals, we see all sorts of things that happen. We see great moves of the spirit, great healings, great salvations. It's all part of revival. But as we've gone back so many years and decades and hundreds of years and talked about revivals, it's important, like we've done recently, we've really talked about what's happening now and how, what God's doing now. I know that's what you're, I mean, we love talking about history here, but I love talking about what Jesus is doing right now. Well, I'm very pleased for a special guest today, Michael Miller, pastor of Upper Room. Thanks, Michael, for Thanks being for with me, me, man. Yeah, yeah. Real honor. I mean, you've got a cool church, but I want to talk about you and how this journey began with Upper Room Down. Now, maybe you've seen uh, Michael on, I'm sure, on the call, the send, and think you've been, you've getting around a lot, you know, as well as you know, churches, and that's grown, and we'll hear all about that. Right. But let's go back to the beginning of Upper Room. Right. Tell me how we, how did you get to that point of starting that church? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty fun story. Um, we, we didn't plan on planting a church. Uh, we didn't have a big grand plan. We had an invitation from a business owner, a business leader in uh, Oak Lawn. I don't know if you're familiar with Oak Lawn in Dallas, but it's, it's the, uh, it's the homosexual district of Dallas, Uptown. And he wanted to invite some believers just to come down and start praying for that community. And my wife and I had a history with the prayer movement. We re had a real heart for Dallas. And so his desire for prayer and our history with prayer. What, we, was, what was your history with prayer movement? Um, I, I connected back in um, 2007 with uh, a guy named Sean Foyt. Hmm. And Sean leads now Burn 24 seven and at the time, uh, Burn 24-7 was only in one or two cities. And so our community in Dallas hosted, it was actually only in Tulsa, he, he was at ORU. We hosted the second Burn in Dallas, uh, which was just a weekend where you open up time and space for the church to come and pray. So we had a dozen or so churches come and just start ministering to the Lord. And I got, I got ruined. I, mm. Just the presence of Jesus that, that weekend specifically really touched my heart. I left the church I was at and started traveling with Sean and we started planting these furnaces. Um, so when you, you know, you say ruined and Todd says wrecked, <laughs> you know, and Michael. So, you know, explain what really when you say that, I mean, I understand, yeah. but what happened to you just during that time? Nothing, nothing else. I could settle for nothing else. Um, just the presence of Jesus, just right. the tangible manifestation 
of the presence of Jesus, right. and it was, it was undeniable that he was resting in that place. When I say ruined, I, 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 had, I had a training and background that said this is, this is what church should look like, but right. when we really opened up time and space for the Lord uh, to, to be in our midst, I thought, man, I want to really throw my energies and gifting and felt a calling to build community around that place. Yeah. Okay, so, so fast forward now. So you decide you're going to, a business invited you to have a meeting, yeah, is that Yeah, it right? was a veterinarian. Um, he, he now has several veterinarian clinics around town and in other cities, but it was his headquarters and he had about 3,000 square feet on the back portion of his property. And he called this room the upper room. So it was on the second, second floor and it overlooked downtown Dallas. And, uh, and so we started praying April of 2010, uh, probably about a half dozen people. And we thought we would go from Passover to Pentecost. Uh, and as, as we started praying, we just started seeing God sovereignly move. For, for me, I, the, the primary focus was just to, to worship and to, to, to create space for the presence of Jesus to, yeah. to, to lead us and to lead our prayers. But yeah, we, we definitely prayed for the community. We prayed for our city. We prayed, um, there, were, there were targets I think he gave us in, in the place of prayer, but, but prayer, I, I, I liken prayer, the word prayer, it's an elastic word. I, when I hear the word prayer, I hear relationship. So it was just a group of people um, loving Jesus and then rightly responding to his love in those moments and just saying what he was saying, moving where he was moving and, uh, and, and community kind of sovereignly formed in that, that season. Okay, so, so you guys started meeting. Now, obviously, did you get the word out about what was happening? No, that's what's really funny is, is the Lord told us in the early days, he said, don't mark this. Don't put a name on it. Don't come up with a strategy. Don't, don't get a website. He was really, really, really intentional about protecting what he was doing. Right. And um, he said, don't, don't put any other name on it. My testimony will mark this place. Welcome to Upper Room Dallas. My name is Michael, this is my wife Larissa. We're the lead pastors of Upper Room Dallas and the directors of Upper Room Global. We are convinced that it's the presence of Jesus that transforms a life. And for that reason, we gather in our prayer room morning and noon and night to exalt him, to give him thanks, to honor him, and really just to commune with him and to invite a city into that. And as we gather morning, noon, and night, our goal is to host the presence of Jesus. It's the distinguishing mark of our community, His presence among us. And we do believe that as we gather around His presence, that lives are transformed. And when lives are transformed, cities are transformed. We started in April of 2010 in an actual upper room that overlooked the city. We had a Passover and then we prayed and we worshiped until Pentecost. By the time Pentecost came, there was so much that God was doing in our midst that we really couldn't stop. Yeah, the momentum in those early days was so significant. We knew God was up to something, but we didn't quite know what it was. As we pressed into that, we realized that it wasn't just for one city, but it was for multiple cities. And we feel that God has called us to plant upper rooms in downtown urban areas. You met, you said you were planning to go from to Pentecost uh, on for just a few weeks, 50 days. Right. And, and so what happened? Right, well after, after Pentecost, we decided we would push through the summer of, of 2010. And, uh, and we just started hosting uh, daily prayer meetings. So it went from, from Sunday nights yeah. to then um, it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so we were regularly gathering. Um, people uh, started talking about moving down to Oaklawn, which was a huge step of faith for us. I was trying to convince them not to because I didn't really, I didn't really want to be on the hook for, uh, for, for, for building something long-term. I thought it was going to be a short-term thing, but, but sure enough, people did start moving down and a church formed. Uh, and, and it was just, it was, it was people that were hungry um, for the presence of Jesus, for doing life around the presence of Jesus. We, we talk a lot about the in and out lifestyle coming in in order to go out, but we, we really established the in was first and foremost centered around his presence, centered around, one, one of the phrases that came out of our community that I hadn't heard a ton, but was, uh, was ministering to Jesus, ministering to him, loving him. 
And so we made that our primary focus, primary ministry, and everything's kind of flown from that place. So how do you, how do, you do that? It's a great question. Um, I think we're still learning to do it. Um, but but I, I, one of the primary uh, expressions of loving him is, is thanksgiving, is giving thanks. Um, I, I, I call it the little hinge that opens a big door. And so we, we, we start every prayer meeting, even today, uh, we're a community in Dallas. We have several campuses, but, but our Dallas campus, 2000 people, we pray morning, noon and night. And every prayer session for at least 10, 20 minutes is just an offering of thanks. It's people gathering in gratitude for what Jesus has done. And that simple devotion, starting out devotion in that way, uh, I, I believe rightly, rightly positions us to receive the Holy Spirit and then to be guided by him. And so the, the, the prayer meetings are really presence led, uh, which means there's not, there's not, there's not a, 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 a model that's real, real structured as much as it is. Uh, we wanna come in with thanks and then allow the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide the prayer meeting accordingly. So I, 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 I liken us, we're, we're students of the presence of the Lord, we're scientists. What is he like? What moves him? What stirs him? What provokes him? What didn't he like? Um, so we do a lot of debriefing after a prayer meeting, but, but we've really created a community that, that, that is, is rightly responding to the presence of the Lord. So how do you keep it fresh? Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's not always fresh. Uh, Cause, Cause you've grown, now you're a thing. Yeah. Now. I mean, it's this big church yeah. and I mean, you, like you said, you got several campuses and continuing to grow and everybody's focus is turned down and they're all watching. You yeah. Know. So how do you do that? Yeah. Keep it fresh. You know, the Bible says we can't approach him if we approach him with faith. That's what pleases him is faith. And so I think, I think the key to keeping your heart fresh before the Lord is keeping your heart in the place of faith. Right. Um, and so I think discipline is, is a major part of that, regularly showing up, um, but, but, but allowing the Holy Spirit to, to guide, lead our hearts um, is, is really crucial. I think the, the, voice, the voice of the Lord and positioning people to, to respond rightly to the voice of the Lord is really, really key. I, I'm thinking about if I was in your position with this, you know, this growing thing and there's a lot of buzz and a lot of excitement and people are singing, what do you do? <clears throat> now you're talking to pastors out there. So what do you do as a pastor to keep yourself, I mean, you have to pull away. Right. You have to spend that time. So what does right. it do personally to keep it fresh for you? Yeah, um, I, I, think, I think one of the main, one of the main things I do uh, as a leader is I am constantly reminding myself that as a leader and in the position that I am, I'm first and foremost a follower. Mm -hmm. That 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 the Lord, the Lord is building this. Yeah. That this was His idea. This this is not. It's not up to me. It's not up to my gifting. It's not up to uh, my ability to know everything. My my primary focus is first and foremost being a follower and a lover. And if I'm first and foremost a follower and a lover, and I am positioning my heart personally uh, to be led by the Holy Spirit, yeah. um, that will position the community that I'm leading to experience what I'm experiencing personally. And so I think as leaders, a lot of times we, uh, we feel pressures to, 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 to meet expectations, to have every question answered, but I'm realizing if I can just keep this one thing before my heart and this one thing before my community, that one thing is everything. Right. Like the presence of the Lord is the answer. Yeah, It's the answer. There, there's many questions right now, many questions facing leaders, but the presence of the Lord is the answer. And if we will, if we will, if we will put all of our chips in that one place, Man, things, things happen that we cannot orchestrate, plan, um, that we can't in somehow intentionally do. It, it's positioning ourselves to do the immeasurably more exceedingly beyond what we could ask for or imagine. And I, I think that one simple pursuit is so hard to keep before uh, our hearts as leaders, but if we can fight to keep that one thing before us, it, it's the key to everything. Yeah. What's so important about worship? 
Right. <laughs> That's a softball. It is. Um, you, can, you can knock this one out. Well, it's the only, it's the only right response to the Lord. The Lord, when you know the Lord, uh, when you know the Lord, you, you, you worship the Lord. Uh, we, we define worship as agreeing with who He is. So, so it's seeing the Lord rightly, um, and 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 when a community takes their eyes off of themselves, even a community takes their eyes off of their mission. But we start beholding once again the beauty of the man Jesus. Right. Uh, th- that that's captivating. Um, use the word ruin. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're you're undone for anything less than that. Yeah. I think it's what 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 marked the life of David. Psalms 27 verse 4. One thing I seek. This is what I ask that I may gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. Uh, th- that's worship. Where where His beauty, where His nature takes precedent above anything else and we begin to create and make space and time to to adore to behold uh, that beauty that's worship Michael what are you seeing tell me some of the I know you've seen some miracles happen at church mm-hmm. tell me some of the stuff that's happened there in the early days uh, one of the things that we saw happen is the Lord was healing deaf ears we saw we saw I think it was four deaf ears open up within a matter of three to four months yeah. Um, and that, that really caught our attention that, that he's going to give us ears to hear uh, what he's speaking to his bride. Um, so, so the early days were marked with some, some significant miracles. We, I personally had never seen a deaf ear open. That was, uh, that was a first for me. Um, but, but really the, the most common miracles we see in our community happen uh, in, in prayer meetings um, from people being they're in proximity to the presence. They're in proximity uh, to others that are pursuing the presence of Jesus and, and just miracles are flowing from that. Uh, we've seen cancer he- healed. Uh, we've seen, I, I've seen a lot of uh, recently, a lot of uh, mental uh, disorders, a lot of uh, obsessive compulsive, bipolar, mm-hmm. those types of things happen. That's at Psalms 23, he's restoring the soul of his people. And uh, it's really by, by laying, putting them in a place of rest, putting them in a place where, where they can really come under the Lordship of His Spirit and He's freeing them emotionally just where they've right. been tied up and bound. So I would say a lot of uh, recently of emotional disorder and um, anxiety, panic, those sorts yeah. of things. But isn't it interesting because you weren't saying I'm, we're going to have a healing meeting tonight. No. You were just pushing into the presence of, of God. Yes. And these things happen. Yes. Yes. So that's where you, where you say the presence is everything. Yeah, yeah, the presence of Jesus, man. I, I, uh, I think it's uh, Michael Kulianos that says this, but I've adopted his language that the presence of Jesus is actually Jesus. It is. <laughs> and our response to the presence is actually our response to him. And if, if the presence is a peripheral or side issue, then so is Jesus. Right. And so the, the, the presence has to be at the center of all that we do. Yeah. And, uh, and so I, I think it's a learned, I say this a lot, but I just, I just think it's, it's something that, that we learn to do. We learn to respond rightly to the Lord. Um, for the longest time, we didn't have media. We didn't have a website. We didn't brand our community. But back in 2017, um, Brian Guerin had a word that Jesus was putting an HDMI cable in his mouth and he's ready to speak through media. Mm. And when I heard that word, it just hit my heart. And I thought, I thought, Lord, is that, are you speaking to us? We were in the season of no branding, no media. Mm-hmm. Uh, is, it, is it time for us to do something like that? And, and I really felt a yes from him that it was time. And so we got some cameras and just started filming our community. And, uh, 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 and so we had this footage and I said, Lord, what do you want to do with this footage? What, what, what does it look like for us to, to utilize media? And, uh, and I, I, had an, I had a vision, I was praying about it, I had a vision of the Lord. Um, he came into a hospital room and he, had, he was rolling in an, an IV with a, with a drip bag. And he put the IV into a dying man on a, on a bed, it was, it was mm-hmm. a hospital room. And, uh, and the, the, the IV, the bag of the IV, it, it said upper room on it. And I saw him turn the IV on and this drip started happening. And, and the drip was dripping into the dying man and as the IV uh, was in him, it, it brought life to him. And I felt like the Lord said, I want you to drip moments of your culture into the dying man who is culture oh. and watch what I do. 
And so we started putting these moments online uh, that were just worship moments. And uh, like our second or third moment went viral. And uh, that was two, 2017 that we launched um, uh, our YouTube channel. And in 2018, um, our statistics at the end of the year, we had about, um, this is kind of mind blowing, but, but every day our daily average of viewers was, was one year of viewing every day. Wow. So it was almost 360 years of views on our YouTube channel last year um, from this just word that he gave us about dripping moments of our culture into culture. And, um, and so I think, I think the, the, the Lord's strategies, what, what, <laughs> what he can do again is just, just beyond what we ask or imagine. Yeah. Do you have a lot of people wanting to know your secret sauce? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See and, what you did. And they oftentimes are, are, they're kind of frustrated by the answer because I yeah. think it is so simple. Yeah. Um, you know, our, our core verse here is Genesis 26, 18, which is Isaac redug the wells mm. of revival. He mm. redug the wells and that's what we talk about redigging. And that's really what you're doing uh, as you dig into the presence of Jesus is really you're opening that back up. Mm. And I think you said it so well about the presence is everything. Yeah. And it's so simple, isn't it? We make it so hard, yet the answer is so simple. Yeah. Yeah. So you have, um, I, know, I know you've got several campuses going now, and, and you have a, I would say, overwhelmingly large part of your community is, would you say under 30, under 40? Yeah, yeah. totally, under 30. Yeah, it's, so. It's, I call it Millennialville. Millennialville, <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. millennials. Okay, yeah. so. What is it? Tell me what you're seeing happening there. Um, you know, because the the older generation it g goes from ah, I don't know what to do with these kids. Yeah. You know, to you know what God's doing. So yeah. No, me. the statistics are crazy. Uh, <coughs> millennials, and then also this generation. I believe it's Generation Z that's right behind them. Right. Uh, which will be the first post-Christian generation in our nation. And um, and yeah, the statistics are alarming. Uh, how many young people are leaving the church. And um, we though are seeing, we're seeing the opposite, man. I'm seeing, I'm seeing millennials weekly uh, give their life to Jesus. And I, I, I keep coming back to the presence of the Lord, but, but I, I have seen them when they get in an environment that's authentically going after uh, the presence where hearts are burning for the Lord. Yeah. That fire that they sense, that fire that they get around, it's irresistible to them. I think they're looking for a cause bigger than themselves. You see these movements on the earth that are emerging, right. people protesting, they're looking for a cause to give themselves to. And when, when the gospel's rightly laid out before them and they see people rightly responding to Jesus, burning for him, giving their whole lives to him, uh, that pursuit, it provokes something in them. I think this generation is, is longing for something real and there's nothing more real than the living God. Yeah. When, when the presence of the living God is in the room, their hearts start to burn. They don't know what's happening to their yeah. hearts, but, but there's enough there's enough within them, the pursuit for the authentic, the pursuit for something genuine and real, it provokes them to ask questions and well, what is this? Well, this is Jesus. You mean the one that I grew up hearing about? Yeah. yeah. This is him. I didn't know that. I didn't know this one. That's who he is. And, and, and that, that, that provokes something in them and I'm watching them man, just lay their lives down, give yeah. their lives uh, to him. So it's really powerful. It is powerful. Yeah. Well, what would you say to those that are watching? You know, people, you know, I talk all the time about the Hebrides revival and these two 80 year old women that prayed and God's a great move mm. of God happened, you mm. know, in the Hebrides in 1949. So what, but tell me, what do you tell people? What can you tell somebody that's watching you going, wow, this is cool. I watch you on YouTube and everything else. And what is it you say to them that how can they be the one for right. what's going on? Right. Um, I, I believe the Lord is, <clears throat> is looking, uh, I believe he's looking for, uh, he's looking for lovers. He's looking for, for those that, that will truly love him yeah. beyond, beyond 
I think, I think a lot of times we, we want to know what we can do for him. We want to, like, well, I want to be a part of something like that. And that something like that is the fruit of this one pursuit yeah. of loving him. And um, I think making space and time for him, making space and time for him to reveal himself to uh, you and, and where you're at. He wants to speak to you. He wants to lead you. He wants to graft you into what he's doing. He doesn't want to leave anyone out. He, right. we're, we're all, if we're born again, we're qualified to, to, to start something, to do something for him. But it, but it, but it begins, it begins with first and foremost loving him. And uh, I, I know that's a, that's a real simple answer. But, but it really is that simple, isn't but it? But it, 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 it's gotten way too complicated. It's just gotten so complicated. And, and the simplicity of impurity of devoting ourselves to him, before we know it, we're positioned and qualified to do what we were never positioned and qualified to do. And so if someone's frustrated with where they're at and confused, um, I, I actually think it's, it's the Lord that's bringing forth that so that they can, they can re-ante and reposition themselves once again to love him, make space for him, and watch what he does. Watch, watch how he leads, watch how he guides and be faithful to simply do what he asks you to do. Do nothing more, nothing less. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like one of the things that, 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 that's happening right now is there's just a lot of echoes or there's a lot of people that are uh, trying to, 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 to do or be something that the Lord's not asking them to do or to be. And so when we, when we let go and, and, and strip ourselves of all of our own expectations and we really we really honestly come before him as he is man i have seen so many people uh be led into these these endeavors and these stories i was talking to a guy today who started a missions movement and they're touching iraq and iran right now but it was just through this simple letting go <laughs> of of what he wasn't supposed to be laying hold of and coming before the Lord honestly, loving the Lord rightly. And before he knew it, now he's, he's leading a missions movement in Southern Iran and Northern Iraq. And I feel like the Lord's just looking for people that will forsake everything for that one thing. And then it's like all these other things uh, start to line up after that. Well, that's good. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, man, thanks for having me. This has been... Yeah, it's been fun. Hey, but before you go, we're out of time for this program, but uh, I'm gonna have Michael stay for just a little bit longer and he's gonna give me one of these nuggets that he talked about. So if you're a pastor or leader, go over to our YouTube channel at Revival Radio TV and he's gonna give us one of them. If you wanna know, come over there and join us. Thanks, man. Yeah, real honor. Thank you.